Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome back to this edition of AP Computer Science. Glad to have you all with you today. Uh, if you've remembered so far, there were four topics we're getting done with to get used to the AP exam. And you finished up three of them. On Tuesday, you finished up your arrays and array lists component. And you just got some feedback on that and completed your bell work, which was in response to the email that you all sent to me about what you wanted to learn about our next topic. Array. Everybody's favorite. Woo. Counting today, we only have four classes left for the AP exam. Today, Thursday, May 7th, Tuesday, May 12th. For sure, we'll talk about array lists. Mm -hmm. I am aware, though, that actually a number of you have um, an AP exam on Tuesday, May 12th. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is next week, the assignments for May 7th and May 12th, so you can do your array list review early if you want to get out of the way and have some more time for AP exam. Um, you can see our little schedule here. My goal is to really get into it about array lists in the coming days. And I want to, today I'm going to kind of go over a lot of the basics and ways of thinking about array lists that we learned earlier this year so that we can spend the next two class periods looking at these complex or complex problems that we might want to go over together. I would say it's highly likely that you have a question about array lists on the AP computer. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> ha. ha. Array lists, more like array lit. Man, they're still teaching middle school. A little off hilarious. Hoping that put you in good spirits too. So why in the heck do we have array lists? It's tricky. It's difficult. It's probably the most complicated thing we've learned this year. Okay. Um, an array list is basically what I like to call a dynamic array of classes. So there's kind of two reasons, two things that separate it from normal classes array. It's dynamic. So it's not a fixed array. We can have as many as we want. We don't have to set it to five or 10 at the beginning. We can add things on and remove them as we see fit, which is a really convenient part of their behavior. And it's an array of classes. So it can hold strings and integers if we want to, but also different class types. One of the examples that I'll work with throughout class today is just saying that maybe there's some sort of array class called a person. Um, we can make an array list of persons into people equals a new array list. And if you need a little bit of a reminder on how uh, they're defined, um, you can see that <clears throat> in um, this little example line of code right here. Now, just for your purposes, if you find this uh, helpful to know, you are, but as I start to talk about array lists, you are uh, going to have a little assignment on Google Classroom tonight. That's five problems and has an optional FRQ. And if you go to today's page, you'll see that all the examples I'm conducting today are at the available link. And if you want to look at a list of problems, um, you can do that there. I'm also going to ask you to do some practice problems as we roll through here today. Um, I don't just do that for fun. Um, I think having you think about something and actually compare your answers to it goes a lot longer to helping you actually understand it. If you want to do um, array lists, um, if you really want to understand array lists, try. Okay, make sure that you're trying to practice the little things that we're doing, interviewing it against what we do together in class. And this is going to be kind of the last day for like a lot of direct instruction that I'm doing, for you guys. Um, so please get a pencil or a whiteboard out. We've talked about why array lists. Let's take a look at how maybe this works in action. Okay. If you create an array list of person objects, um, rather than just having an array list of simple values like integers, um, you can hold an array list of things that are more complicated. You can make and organize them. Imagine that, say, you were um, the state and you were trying to keep track of information about everybody who had a driver's license. Well, maybe having a class called person with a constructor, um, a name, a height, and an eye color value would be a way to help you organize information about people's driver's licenses together. So you can process their name with their height and their eye color. And it's a way for us to really take more complicated values, like an address or a specific type of person, or um, organize the items in a grocery store, or um, uh, keep track of students in our database and what classes they want to take listed with their grade point average so that we know that they're in appropriate classes for next year. This 
is really the main example of what we call a data structure that you learn about in this class. And data structures are really at the root of computer. You continue to pursue this uh, after this class, you'll start to see how they pop up in more and more places. Rails is like our first real example. Here's our list of common ArrayList methods. Um, what I've got is uh, on the left, size, add, get will return the index of an element. Um, or it actually return the object based on its index. I'm going to earlier. Set, remove an index of. So we can get either the index or um, the object or the uh, value of the object itself. Um, and all of these are the parameters that are required for each of these in there. I would say add and remove are probably the most likely ones that you'll use, but index of also comes in handy for us because we want to see exactly where a particular object of that type is located. This is also available on the notes for today um, if you want to pull it up and take a look at it. So when we're adding things to an array list, we have two ways to do it. We have what we call the long way and the short way. I'm going to call them that way. I went over this briefly in class before, but I do think it's something that's important to know. Say we define an array list of persons named people equals a new array list of persons. We have a long way of adding something into that array list. We can say person, Mr. Baron, equals new person, so created a new person object. And then we can say people, the array list, dot add Mr. Baron. So that way I've added an object last person from an object that already exists. The other way to do this is to create an object of that particular class inside of that add method. You can actually call the second half of the constructor inside of the add method just to add in a new person into this value. So with a default constructor, you can say people.add a new person. That'll make a new one. You know, maybe if you just wanted to start out by initializing um, an array list of persons, you could say people.add new person. Um, if you have a constructor, say that takes two arguments, like Mr. Baron for name and six for height, um, you can actually put those inside of the constructor here. That you're adding it in as you're creating it. And this is what I'm going to refer to as the short way. And this is something that I want you to try to be able to do. At this point in time, you have the information to answer questions number one through number three on the Google Classroom file. I would go to Google Classroom. I would open up the array list review IP. I would answer questions number one through three right now before proceeding. Um, if you're feeling good about those questions, you should be good to go. If you're having trouble with them, then rewatching the video or coming to office hours might be. I'll stop for about 10 seconds and then we'll move on to talk about everybody's favorite. For each. For each loops loop through all of the things that currently exist. That's why they're useful. They're not set to a certain size. You don't say from zero to 10. You say for all of the things inside of that array list for all the objects inside of this array list and this is basically how they work for each person p in the array list named people you really want to be able to translate these into words i've got an array list of persons named people i want to say that for each of the persons i'm going to use a variable called p okay just like how in a normal for loop you use x to represent each of the indexes in the array i'm going to use p to represent all of the persons in the value people. System.out.println p.getName. When we call p, that represents every single object of that particular type inside of this array list. What I use is I use this variable placeholder. I don't write person.getName. I don't write people.getName. p.getName is going to print the name of every single person object. And you can apply methods to it inside of the for each loop that makes it super helpful if you want to pause your video and look at this for a sec you might find it helpful 
Um, feel free to do that. This is also summarized in the note sheet for today. And I'm going to have us do a little bit of practice in just a moment once you feel like you're good on this. Let's make sure we're feeling good about four each loops. Create a for each loop, all of the strings in a string array list named words. Create a for each loop for all of the ultimate player objects in an array list named team. Write a for each loop for all of the box, car, objects in an array list named cargo. Okay. Get your pencil, get your pen out, pause your video, practice and make sure that you can do this because you need to be able to do this to solve all the problems we're going to solve in class. Restart the video once again. I'm going to go ahead and open up a little workspace for today. I'm going to do some for each practice. And I want to make sure that I can translate words into these for each loops so I know how to write them down. Write a for each loop for all of the strings in a string array list named a word. So we write for. The first thing that we always write is the type of array list. So string. And then I'm going to give a variable that represents each value in the array list. So I'll put s. It's an easy letter to use. And then I'm going to put my array list name. And now S represents every string in words that I can loop through. I can do print S dot length. I can print um, S dot get index of A. I can use any of the string methods on S there. Right, a for each loop for all of the ultimate player objects in an array list named team. The type of this array list is ultimate player. Sound familiar? Maybe I'll just use the word player so I can be reminded that it's a player there. Colon, and my array list is named team. Now player represents every ultimate player object in team. Write things like that position that you guys did in mastery coding assignment number three. Write a for each loop for all of the boxcar objects in an array list named Carter. Boxcar is my type. I'll use car to represent the bucket. Cargo is the name of my array list. Now car represents each boxcar item. I've defined a variable that I can now go and use. In this case, cargo, car here, player here, and s here that I can run methods on, and it's going to affect all of them. Make sure you're feeling good about this for each practice. If you want some guidance, come into my office hours today. It could be a really good idea. Because in the next video, we're going to talk about how to solve array lists of class problems, which is really where we start to put all of these pieces together.